Hi, everybody, and you're through to episode 13 of Camology, the Cambridge podcast. And for this episode, we are joined by Ben Phillips, not Benjamin, not Benjamin Felipe, but Ben Phillips from... How are you doing, Dan? I'm, I am spectacular, mate. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good stuff. So it's a podcast, but with a slight twist on it today. So do you want to just, do you want to tell people uh, who you are and what you do? And then we'll, we'll jump into the podcast. Uh, yeah, so we were chatting, weren't we, about photography. Uh, I run an Instagram account in Cambridge, covering a wide range of photography, uh, mainly like nice scenic shots of Cambridge and the colleges. But also I am one of the club photographers at Cambridge United and also cover a lot of sport as well in locally and grassroots in Cambridge. Excellent, mate. Excellent. OK, and then so have you always been a photographer or what was your route into so, photography? Yeah, I kind of got into photography when I first left school. I worked at Andrew McCulloch's Electrical. They had a photo processing shop. I requested to go work in that shop. I used to learn how to kind of develop film, if you can remember what they were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on a daily basis, I used to be almost like on a convey about developing people's films, getting to learn about photography, speaking to the pros when they came in the shop, processing their images, and kind of networking with them to then kind of ask questions, to then go out and kind of get amongst them and got the opportunity to go out with some of them guys to then learn some of the tricks of the trade, buy a digital camera and off you go sort of thing. Ah. And I, when I first started, obviously like anybody, uh, you kind of shoot anything and everything and you take your camera everywhere you go hmm. and it kind of builds up a portfolio and kind of do work for free. And yeah. that also helps build up a portfolio. Yeah. And then once you've got a portfolio together, obviously you can then start branching out, asking people more questions, kind of approaching people, obviously then eventually for paid work. Nice, nice. Well, that's, that sort of leads us sort of uh, segueing into um, seeing some of your shots. So bear with me, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll have, a look at, have a look at it via screen share. So, so we've, got a few, we've got a few of your pictures up here. So do you want to talk us through do you want to talk us through what you've well, obviously it's a game of football but uh <laughs> well, yeah. stay the obvious. Stay in the obvious um now for the uninitiated what who we who who are we watching here so this is a fixture from last season uh came united in the black and amber against lincoln city in the red and white stripes lincoln city are fighting for the title came united as always mid-table mediocre <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> so much. This was my first season in photographing football and getting the opportunity to photograph the team I love, Cambridge. This is a particular shot I really liked because, as you can see, the guy in the Lincoln shirt is going in for the tackle. The ball's been played, but if you, if you look at Gary Deegan's leg there, it looks like it's about to get his leg broke. Ooh. It's kind of froze the action. Mm. The, guy in, the guy for Lincoln obviously got sent off, but Lincoln City tried to appeal the challenge and appeal the red card. Uh, what happened? He did, didn't it? This is this the game where Giovanni Brown scored for, from forty-five yards? Is that that's the one? it? Yeah, like yeah, a one-all yeah, yeah. draw, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. So Lincoln City appealed a red card. I then send my images off to the club, like I do after every match. Yes. They looked at it. They push it onto other people. At the time, I was shooting for Cambridge Evening News as well, so this one got put in there. Lincoln City end, ended up seeing the image and going, "Okay, well, we can't really appeal that. He's coming over the top of the knee. The ball's been played." It's a reckless challenge, red card straight away. So it's kind of a favourite image of mine, that one, Dan, just because that was my first season doing it, and I like to kind of freeze the action and catch the action as it happens. So that was perfect for that sort of opportunity. So when you're when you're photographing, can you? How can I put this? Do you intuitively see? Can, do you for, um? Do you? How can I put this? Where do I sit around the ground? Yeah, where, A, where do you sit around the ground? And can you, with experience, see where these kind of events are going to happen? So you're perhaps moving your camera with the action or you're waiting for players to run into a, uh, into a part of the pitch? How do you, how, I think how do you it's a build-up of all of that, Dan, to be honest. This is only my second season doing it. I've, I've all, keep learning tips from Simon Lancaster, who's been doing it nine years at the club as well. Hmm. But obviously, we also sit pitch side as close to the action as we can get. If games are playing away, I tend to sit towards the end that Cambridge are attacking just because people from our point of view and fans want to see our goals, yeah. not so much a defensive clearance. So I'll kind, of, I'll kind of sit up near the kind of away goal, so to speak. 
I'll then keep like one eye open, one eye through the viewfinder, and I'll be kind of watching the action as it unfolds mm. and just hitting the trigger button as I see it when it comes into view in the lens, basically. It must be it must be quite a challenge by not. It is, yeah. Uh, it comes with a bit of practice. I think one of the hardest things is, as a fan as well, is to remember that you're sat on the side of the pitch. You can't celebrate when the team scores. <laughs> I was going to say it's like you know you've got to you've got to main, remain professional and uh, and not celebrate and catch. Yeah, so it has happened a couple of times, but yeah, you've got to be careful. Nice, nice. Good old Gary Deegan. I wonder how he, he's getting on now. Yeah, definitely. Do we know how he's getting on? Because he was pretty ill at one point, wasn't he? Yeah, he's pretty ill. Uh, I'm not sure how he's doing now. He's back in Ireland playing. Good, good stuff. Yeah, good, good. How can they? How could they even begin to uh, appeal that? That's disgusting. But oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. What have we got next? Ah, now that I'm <laughs> good old Jesse. So where? Yeah, this was at the Corn Exchange. So I've kind of started doing some kind of branching out and doing some gig photography, music photography. I was asked to go along and shoot Jesse J at the Corn Exchange, so I jumped at the opportunity. Who are you asked, mind, how does that work? So how, who are you asked by, by, or can you get a press pass, or how does it work? You can apply for press passes, and also you can do it for agencies, so this was a bit of both. Okay. But obviously, when you go to a big gig, so let's say at Cambridge Corn Exchange, for instance, or, or even anywhere, really, a lot of press passes only allow you in the, what they call the pit at the front for free songs. So you've got to be quick, and you've got to shoot continuous almost to get the sort of action you want. I quite like this one because she's kind of giving it a bit of attitude and I quite like the light, the difference in the light coming across her face. Mm. Mm. And it's That's got good. a nice mixture of colours. But as well as Jesse J, I've done quite a few now at the Corn Exchange now. So we've done Catherine Jenkins as well, uh, the undertones, the specials. So we've done quite a few now and kind of enjoying a bit of gig photography because obviously you get to watch and listen to the music as well. Because mm. I was going to say, you've really captured... Um... I guess it's her stage persona, but you've kind of you have kind of captured that attitude of her, haven't you? Yeah, that's what I liked about this image. Obviously, there's plenty of images of her singing into the microphone and stuff, but I kind of like you say, I like the stage presence. I like the attitude that comes across in the image in the face, and I definitely like that kind of background lighting that's come from obviously overhead, mm. and it kind of splits it up a bit and gives it a bit of colour when she's wearing quite neutral colours anyway. Gotcha, gotcha. And do you do you do any post production on these? Uh, only a little bit, but not much. Mainly just kind of how I set my camera up and play around. Good stuff. I'm not a massive fan in front of sitting in front of computers constantly, unfortunately. Well, what's your opinion on that then? Because part of me feels, well, if you if if you're a good cameraman or a technical cameraman, that you set your camera up, you yeah you set up where you're going to where you're going to sit, where you're going to stand. You set up your exposure. You frame the shot. To a certain extent, is photoshopping cheating, or is it just like part? Of I the think life? it. I wouldn't say it's cheating because, at the end of the day, like everybody's preference is different. But also, like at the same time, every, you do need to edit a few photographs every now and then. Mm. Like the lighting was changed slightly in this one to make it slightly darker around her hair, for instance. But okay. I don't kind of spend. Some photographers will spend absolute ages on each in, individual image, but I don't do that. Taking back, say, the football images, I'll go through them. I'll delete the ones that are out of focus. Hmm. The ones that I think are sharp and clear, I'll keep, and then I'll maybe put a like filter through all of them yeah, to yeah. make them all look the same, and then that'll be it. Yeah, getcha, getcha. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a Cambridge picture and a half, isn't it? That was. So, do you want to give us a bit of a bit of a background on this? Yeah. So, this is the captain for Cambridge. I think it was three years ago, uh, Cambridge University Rugby Club. I got given the opportunity to go down to Twickenham, which was pretty cool, and shoot the varsity. F varsity rugby there male and female game on the same day Cambridge won and I quite like this image at the end because it kind of shows the emotion that the guy's feeling mm. and it captures that kind of atmosphere do you know what I mean and what it means to him to have won that cup <laughs> he's really in the moment isn't he he's like it's really he's really in the moment I like kind of in in capturing my images especially in sport I try and kind of capture the moment and I like that kind of freezing the moment and capturing yeah. people unaware sometimes is quite nice as well because it makes some more kind of natural shots <laughs> and they might they might look back at that and think, oh, I don't remember that I'm being taken. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it gives a gives an edge to things. I think. Yeah, too right. <laughs> <laughs> Same match. Nice. This is uh, Nick Costa on the right hand side there with the gash on his face. So he gets a boot in the face with about 15 minutes to go. 
kind of comes off, gets patched up slightly, but goes back on. Wouldn't mm. happen in football. I like this image because it kind of, to me, it shows again a bit of emotion, but it shows grit and determination. Yeah. Like you can see the players there, he's injured, but he's more important is kind of posing with his family for pictures. Yeah. He's not. I, I bet he wasn't feeling that at all, but I bet once adrenaline ran up. Yeah, uh, exactly. Exactly. Away. And also, this image was quite popular because it ended up getting in some publications in rugby. Uh, so, to me, I kind of enjoy this shot as well. No, so how do they, and how do, so you took this shot, how does that get into a publication? Do pe, do oh, so pe I end up putting all my images, Dan, from sports matches on my Flickr account, Capture Cambridge. I'll then share it around to a few different people, i.e. agencies, and also online on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And kind of put the link out there for people to go and have a look if they want to have a look. Especially if I've been, a, if I've been at a big match, and say I've captured someone in the crowd, or even these, these people here, for instance, I went up to them after, give them a card, and be like, I'll just caught an image of you, come and have a look later. It'll be up on here. They don't feel then obliged to buy, but they can have a look at the image, it's watermarked. If yeah. they want to buy it, they can then buy it for a set fee. But I don't charge much, because I don't do this as a living. I do it more as a passion and a hobby. Nice. Nice. Well, that's, that is a lovely... Uh, <laughs> Look at the expression. I'm looking at the gash in matey's head, but then the expression of the baby. It's just <laughs> the baby. Ooh, what am I doing? Okay, moving on, moving on. Oh, mate, here we go. Our famous, our famous little city. Yeah, so this. this is obviously an iconic image of Cambridge. Um, I used to have a drone and play around with a drone. I'll admit I wasn't a qualified pilot like you have to be now. Yeah. Um, when, when the laws changed, I kind of got rid of it to be honest because it was becoming too much hassle to get it up. Yeah. I've always wanted to see what Cambridge looks like from the sky, <laughs> um, and I just think it's quite iconic. Like all those buildings, historic buildings, it shows how compact as a city we are, considering there's a lot of green space in the city centre itself. Yeah. I'm and I just, think it just, I think it just screams Cambridge University to be honest. It does. It just makes me realize how bloody lucky we are to live in a place like this you know we just well, exactly it, like exactly dan it shows how beautiful the city is i think and how we should appreciate it i'm just trying to know i'm just trying to sort of navigate myself now i'm just trying to think where if you come to the front left of the picture yeah, yeah there that's kind of mathematical bridge ah, of course of course of course yeah yeah and then you go up river and you'll go past queen's college uh, uh, King's College up to Trinity, the big kind of chapel in the middle. Yeah, yeah, that is that's either King's or St John's. I think King's that one. Ah, yeah, and then St John's slightly behind it. Okay, because my yeah, that's it. Because my accountant's window is his office is there, and he's got oh, the, nice. yeah, it's just right there. He's got the best view of there of you have to go up there with a camera down, take a picture. I will. <laughs> Rather than take my rather than take my receipts, I'll just take my uh, take my camera and take your camera and your receipts. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, so um, so you you were you were, you were hinting that the 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 rules on uh, drones and drone licenses is is just too prohibit prohibitive now, isn't it? It is. I mean, you get people panic all the time as soon as you put a drone up in the air. <laughs> people, even if you're doing complying with all the rules, I found. And you're in a massive wide open green space, you whack a drone up, you automatically look like you've got a beacon on your head. And people come over and the people are either intrigued or they're kind of, you can't do this, you can't do that. But you also have to be a kind of qualified, I think it's CAA pilot now for drone licensing. Yeah. And I, have, I can't really justify doing that at the moment, to be honest. So that's hence why I got rid of it. But also yeah. it is good fun because you, you see things from different angles that you wouldn't necessarily normally see. Mm. Yeah. Big so when was this taken? Because I was just looking at, just looking at some of the some of the building work going on. This was taken roughly about two years ago now. Two years ago. Yeah. But it's still a favourite shot of mine, to be honest. So hence I thought I'd share this one with you guys. Nice, no, nice. Love it. Oh, ah. Now where is where is this taken? Uh, this is taken in Ely. Okay. Uh, can't remember the venue, to be honest. <laughs> but. Uh, I chose this image because I started to kind of do a bit of wedding photography. Like, I do get odd bits of it, but again, it's quite time consuming. And I'd rather be concentrating on other things like sport and Cambridge in general. Mm. I like this image because I also like shooting black and white. Mm, I like how the bride and you can see the bride and groom have just got married. Like, you can see how, love they, how in love they are with each other. 
yeah. and it kind of again it captures the moment i like how we got the hut in the background on the left there in the foreground because that's to them symbolizes where they got married and around the lake and we got them in the main kind of focus of the picture so nice I, I, I like the black and white because it's i think it brings out the emotion more in the image yes mate yeah you know I, well it's a, it's a nice composition actually because it's well balanced you've got the tree line you've got the eye uh, following the tree line at the back um there's quite a lot happening in the pictures yeah. and make it make the image shortly yeah i think she's more into the kiss than, than him i bet he, <laughs> he looks like he's more self-conscious yeah i think he's a bit i think he's a bit worried about the camera being there yeah well too late for that mate <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> All right, here we go. Here he is, the man of the moment. Good old Barry. <laughs> man of the moment, Bazza. So I've, I've wanted to photograph the Cambridge United for a number of years and kind of combine two passions of the love of Cambridge United and the love of photography. I was hassling people up there on and off for a while, especially Dave Matthew Jones, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't I just come in with my cameras and sit on the side of the pitch? And anyway, Simon Lancaster has been doing it, like I said, for nine years. Uh, this season, just gone on this picture uh, yeah. Simon decided to take a sabbatical to have yeah. a year out um, Dave approached me and Tom Stewart who's head of communications media at the club they said would I like to have a crack at it and have a go I confess that I hadn't really shot any football as much before any friends matches and that sort of stuff they said it's fine come and give it a go pre-season pre-season started I had a go they were happy this is the first home game of the season Barry Core pops up off the bench bangs in the winner and I kind of like it because it's my first image that I captured for the club. Mm. So it means something to me, like sentimental wise, but also everyone loved Barry Court at the time. And I like it. I like how in the background you've got the fans on their feet all going mad celebrating. I like to cut, like I've said before, I like to catch that emotion. But also it, it kind of tells a story like the passion. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. you can see the passion in Barry's face and he's celebrating. Yes, mate. Yeah. It kind of gives me, it reminds me of that Delia Smith, like. Let's be having you. Let's be. I kind of. I tell you what, it kind of does sum it up because you've got Barry is all emotion, and then um, Reggie. Reggie walking away. Yeah, Reggie's just like yeah. Cause anything, cause a cucumber. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, mate. Like it, and you've got a picture, picture of him actually scoring a goal before he gets injured for the tenth time. So it's a rare, <laughs> it's a rare. It's a rare picture. It's a rare. It's a rarity that one. He's still at the club, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Involved with the youth team. Yes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's my um, my nephew's coach, or was my nephew's okay. coach. Okay. Yeah, nice. There we go. <laughs> Love this. <laughs> where, where, I'm just trying. Is this, was this a parade? What was this one? Uh, yeah. So every September, there's a distinguished gentleman's ride. So last Sunday of September, it happens worldwide. I've got to stop you. What, I've got to stop you. What is a distinguished gentleman? What counts as a distinguished gentleman? <laughs> That's a good question, Dan. So, a kind of it's any gentleman that rides classic bikes over a sort of time frame of I think it's 1970 onwards can take part. Okay. Basically, you don't want the kind of Power Rangers with the big super bikes turning up all in leather. Yeah. It's more kind of ample kind of ride around the town, in cities around, like I say, around the world. Uh, it raises money for prostate cancer and men's mental health. You have to get kind of sponsored to do it and take part. And it's all okay. about awareness of both those charities as well as kind of raising money as well. This was the third year it was done. I've been helping organise on the committee of organising it each year in Cambridge. It's growing bigger and better every year as we're going on. Like this year, just gone, there's 450 riders. And we were the third biggest ride in the UK behind London and Birmingham, which is pretty good for a city of Cambridge's size. I like this image because I've hopped off my Vespa scooter to the side on King's Parade. The parade is coming down past me. I like the guy sat on in the sidecar. That's his, it's a dad and kind of son kind of combi. Aww. And so it kind of means an image to them, do you know what I mean? And I like how in the background we've got the iconic Cambridge again, the Senate House, Gondolin and Keys College there. There's a lot happening. You can see the people in the street are enjoying the parade coming past. Again, we're shooting black and white. It kind of gives that periodic feel to it, like yeah. an old image. And I, I really enjoyed this one. Like, get down low, shoot across, get plenty in the picture. It's nice. And I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I just love the composition again. I do. I just yeah, exactly. Like, it's all about framing, isn't it? Like, at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. 
the more you, I always think the more you can fit in an image, the more enjoyable it is for then the viewer later on down the line. Mm. That's something see. I've learned from other photographers down the years. So it's so a good, yeah, because I'm looking, I'm looking at it and I, and I see Matey with his camera phone and then I look to the right and then the kid smiling, that really joyful sort of smile. Yeah. Know, so, and uh, yeah. And it, it, tells it, a story, it tells a story, doesn't it? Like, that's yeah. what I like about it as well. Yeah, big time. Love it, mate. Thank you. I'm, I'm thinking... I think you should get one of those down. <laughs> well, what I'm really interested, well, uh, they look like to me, well, they want the, the bike up front looks like an English bike, like a Triumph or a... Yeah, it probably is a Triumph. It was mainly yeah. Triumphs on there as the old bikes. Yeah. A lot of old classic English bikes. Really yeah. good event every, every September. Nice. Not this September though. Or is it? Is it yet? Probably not. No. Well, not, so, it's not, it's not yet been confirmed yet. So where is the ride from? Do they just ride through the city centre or do they like start up at... Yeah, so it varies every year. So last year, I think it was, we started out at um, the Cambridge Science Park, nice. a kind of biomedical place there. All meet there in the car park, coffee, bacon rolls, kind of official kind of meeting point. There's a safety briefing, then they all head off. They'll then go halfway around the town. They'll stop somewhere else. So a couple of years ago, I arranged for them to stop at St. John's College in the front of the college there. We had 350 bikes squashed in there. Yes. Again, there's a kind of pit stop for toilets, coffee, drinks. Everybody then gets back on their bikes after posing for photos, goes back out, comes down into the town, kind of, it's almost like look at me showing off these sort yeah. of things. But again, like I say, it's a massive awareness of prostate cancer and men's mental health, which are the two key goals. Mm. And then it will stop, normally it stops at the Gog Magog farm shop up there because then it gives people a nice ride out of the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's plenty of open space there as well. And like you say, I suppose with all these 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 classic bikes, it's much like with cars as well. It's just, everybody parks up, turns the engine off, and everybody compares. Yes, like, another look round, compares yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah. It's then when you've got about five bikes after that don't restart, and the, yeah. <laughs> sitting there, the spanners trying to fix them. <laughs> they all get a bit of an oil leak, and uh, they lose pace. So. Yeah, that's correct. There we go. Oh dear, look at this. Looks like uh, looks like Barry Corr's had a go on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other year, two years ago now, I think it was, I got asked to shoot the varsity boxing. I used to do a bit of boxing myself, always interested in the sport. It was my first go at boxing and I wanted to kind of challenge myself to kind of get those kind of iconic boxing images. Mm. So we're here at the Corn Exchange, Cambridge Street, Oxford, all night boxing. There's men and women fighting in bouts. I'm sitting literally up against the ropes I'm kind of shooting in between the ropes getting covered in blood sweat whatever but also capturing again I go on about the emotion but capturing the action as it unfolds this mm. guy here was only the only guy for Cambridge all night to get knocked out basically so mm. he's just been smashed onto the ropes uh, there's another image I was going to send you and the, there's a woman with her hands under the ropes if so don't fall on me but I like this one more because the ref's having a word in his ear the ref's mm. counting to 10 asking if he's right to continue but then in the end, the guy waves the card in. I like it as well because it kind of, I like the lighting over the heads. Yeah, yeah. And I like how it's filled the frame. And you can see like, I don't know, again, like the emotion, Dan, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, can, you can see like, oh, blimey, he's not looking too clever. Again, it tells the story of that evening. Came yeah. one, luckily, the bouts overall and won the whole event. So that was good. That's what we want. Mm. Uh, this year would have been the varsity boxing again, but it would have been at Oxford. I've since done some boxing photography for the guys again, also uh, against the army and also against the navy, I think it was, and also town and gown. So getting in with these guys, kind of helping them promote themselves as grassroots kind of local sporting clubs, but also giving them some pointers in media and how to kind of promote themselves, but also doing the photography for them. And I kind of enjoy, I enjoy that. Do you know what I mean? Like you're watching the boxing for free, basically. Mm. But obviously, capturing that moment, you get a good buzz from that. Well, I do anyway. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, again, it's just, it's, I've captured it really nicely. Blood everywhere, blood on his shoulder. Exactly. Yeah, claret everywhere. Yeah. Been bashed about a bit, bless him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here he okay. is. <laughs> so we've got to give a background on on the on uh on mr darling 
So yeah. Yeah. Go on. No, no. The, this is the little darling, isn't it, Harry? Little darling. Little sweet. Uh, <laughs> came tonight through through and through, local lad. Uh, comes from over Stretton Way, I think. Anyway, we're playing Colchester away this season. To that point, did did I not see on um, on uh, Twitter he was playing uh, keepy upsy with a with a fan in the street? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah legend. Pro- proper young lad, come through the youth team system. Real nice lad. Real, like you say, real friendly with the fans. Anyway, we're playing Colchester away. We always struggle there, it seems. We weren't, we weren't doing great. Mark Richards pops up, equalises one all. It's almost like injury time, kicking off sort of thing at the injury time, coming up for the final whistle. Ball comes over from a corner. The most unexpected player to get on the end of it is Harry Darling. He doesn't just tap it in with his head or off his bum. He gives it the old overhead kick and puts it in the net. Oh. Sends the crowd absolutely mad. The fans are going mad. It's his first professional goal in football. He's a Cambridge United fan. It means so much to him. And I kind of, again, I know I keep banging about the emotion, but you can yeah. just see like what it means to him to have scored that winning goal for Cambridge Yeah. in the picture. I mean, the picture speaks volumes. Mm. As you know, I mean, you, you go in hospitality at Cambridge United. This image is hanging up there now. Yeah. They, they like this image. Harry likes this image. And no, I just think, I just think it means a lot to when you capture a player celebrating celebrating as well like yeah. as well as trying to capture the goal I think it's just as equally important to it tells a story of like that player going mental celebrating as well mm. yeah. and it's it's almost like an iconic image of the season again the season's been a bit mediocre change of manager haven't really done much but there's been the odd good game down and this this is one of them and I really enjoyed Colchester away because we actually won there for once yeah. <laughs> I, I said, well, sadly, I wasn't there. I remember, I, I remember what <laughs> I remember. Uh, yeah, should should never take a weekend away in the football season. But I, I, I was uh, following it on Twitter. I went away for the weekend with my wife. Followed it on Twitter, and it came through as he's only gone and bloody done an overhead kick. And I yeah, just, I just yeah, yeah. But you're right. He's he's he's, he's Cambridge through and through, and um, yeah, that meant so much to him. Look at that. It's just. And I'm looking at the I'm looking at the dumbstruck uh, Goldschmidt defender. Oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> you should have marked him. You should have. Well, you didn't, and we won. How's he done that? No, has, has, has he done that? <laughs> I think it's everybody by surprise that goal. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. Ah, uh, the centre of the universe. Do you want to... <laughs> yeah, the centre of the universe. Uh, favourite place of mine, probably my second home, some might say, especially my wife. Uh, <laughs> the beautiful Abbey Stadium. Again, sitting on the side of the pitch, you see things unfold. This is a night fixture. You see the sun setting. Mm. This is this is going back a couple of years now. Kind of, instead of taking it on the old proper camera, just getting the iPhone out and just snapping off. Mm. And I, I just love that. Like For me, like you can't beat watching Tuesday Night Football under the floodlights at any football stadium. It's got a kind of special feeling about it as a football fan, mm. and I think that, I think that kind of image sums it up because it's kind of dark at the bottom half, and you can see the stand, and then you've got an amazing sky over look overlooking the abbey. Yes. So like, it's good. I like that one. Have you ever taken a, a shot of the ground from uh, Newmarket Road on the bridge? Because I even now I've been following yeah. uh, following United twenty bloody hell, twenty two years and. Every time I walk up Newmarket Road, and uh, walk up Newmarket Road on a night game, and I'm walking over the bridge. You must get like goosebumps, don't you? As well, oh, it's still. I mean, it's ridiculous. Twenty. You'd think we'd get, <laughs> we'd be bored of it by now, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's that's a lovely photo. Yeah. Cheers. Good stuff. Ooh, look at this. Now that's one hell of a composition, my boy. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> cheers, mate. Cheers. So this one was taken recently. Um, I was walking down King's Parade one day, as you do. Hmm. Happened, happened to. I'm always looking for different angles, especially when, like, on my on my main capture Cambridge kind of Instagram account. It's about the people. I try and photograph the characters of Cambridge, but also the shots of Cambridge. But I try and look for different compositions, different shots that people don't necessarily see. So it's all about having a bit of a creative eye. Anybody can pick up a camera, I believe. Hmm. Like, but I can also show you things and teach you things, or anybody how to take a photo. Mm. But it's about having that creative eye and that creative instinct. And I was walking down King's Pro and I thought, oh, that looks quite nice. Maybe have a shot of that. So I hopped, hopped over the wall, as you do, mm. onto the uh, edge of the <laughs> university grass, snuck down uh, low, 
next to the daffodils and just shot straight across looking at Senate House. I like this image as well. Senate House means a bit to me as well, personally. Uh, as a university constable as well, like we go there a lot, uh, look after the Senate House. So I kind of like that image and send it to all the fellow constables after. Again, we've got that nice Gonville and Keys tower in the foreground there as well. And like you say, Dan, a lot of going, lot going on again, good composition. Mm. And it, to me, it kind of bounces out springs, warmer weather's on the way. Cambridge is beautiful this time of year, as we know. And for me, that image kind of portrays all that. Nice. I've never kind of noticed that, really noticed the architecture on the Gonfalon Keys uh, building. It's, like, it's quite gothic, isn't it? It kind of looks... Yeah, well, if you, get, if you get up close to there and look up, look up, there's a lot of kind of ceramic statues, gothic kind of feel images around, around there of ceramics. Especially if you go down past there and go to the next left-hand turn and think it's Trinity Lane. Look up on the side of the roof and the buildings there. You'll see a lot of kind of gothic kind of... Um, imagery i suppose where the architecture have kind of built it and put them kind of statues on the side of the buildings a lot of those university buildings do kind of have that kind of gothic medieval feel but gonfling keys in particular i found if you have a good look around the building and on the outside and appreciate the architecture mm. you'll see the different sort of characters and different kind of goblins and so forth that are on there mm. just thinking it'd be really nice to interview some uh, uh, like a um like a, a tour guide or an architectural tour guide of Cambridge, because I bet they could, you know, that they could go into... Yeah, that, so them sort of guys talk about the history all day long about the buildings. I mean, yeah. I haven't got that good of memory, but I know little bits and bobs. But yeah, again, I think them sort of people would be good to speak to, Dan. Mm. Personally, I'd like to live in that room overlooking King's Parade there, like on the top of that tower. As a, stu <laughs> as a student, you, you hit the top, haven't you, if you get that view? You yeah. have. You, you, you know you're from... You know you're from privileged background. You could just see... It's probably, it's probably some mad professor's room, though, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a sane professor in Cambridge, or is that... They all seem to be uh, in their own little world. But, uh, they are, they're all like, in, uh, quite eccentric. I've got to be careful what I say here. Uh, they're, they're all kind of eccentric, all in their own, own little worlds, their own little kind of bubbles. Mm. But... They are really clever at what they do. Some are too clever for their own good, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. oh, here we go. Here we go. Again, th th this is kind of an image that works all year round. Mm. Um, throughout the seasons, you can get some really good images down here. I kind of like it. If I was to write a book on something, this would maybe be my sort of book cover. Mm. I kind of, I love the kind of tunnel vision that you've, your eye kind of goes straight to the center of the picture. Yeah. Straight to kind of straight away, kind of tunnel vision straight down the middle of the image. Trees are overhanging. It's early morning on the way home from work, finishing at seven, half seven. You've got nice light coming up and it, it just works. I like the big shadows looming over the, tr over the pavement. I photographed this in the fog. I photographed it in the rain, the snow. It never gets boring. It's a, again, it's a good, big, excuse me, Cambridge iconic image. It's Jesus Green, everybody knows where it is. It's really nice. Yeah. Like, it works every time. It's a good one for kind of, what's the word, like documentary photography and like storytelling photography of characters walking away and walking down. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot you can play with here and like use. And like, like I say, it never gets boring. I wonder what it would be like in black and white. Uh, black and white, I'll have to send you one later. I've got one. Nice, because I'm kind of thinking that might bring out, because you've got the old of these London plane trees, you've got quite a strong, you've got quite a strong line of the, of the, of the side branches. I don't know if they yeah, would so be... pop them out a bit more. Yeah. Nice. I quite like it. Cause it kind of, like you say, I like the trees bare there mm. because when I look at that, I look at it as, Oh, look at that. It's all patterned and all together. Do you know what I mean? Like when you just look at the trees and take out everything else out of the concept, it kind of makes a bit of funky kind of arty sort of pattern is how I look at that. It does. You know, well, that's a, do you know, well, that's an even more special photograph. Go on. Because the one, two, is it the third one, the third London plane tree on the left hand side fell over. Yeah, it fell right over. So yeah. there's your symmetry gone, mate. You've, you've, <laughs> it came over. Yeah. So where now remind me the name of this bridge. It's not, it's not the mathematical bridge, is it? Uh, no, this is the Bridge of Size. Uh, this is in St. John's College, where I actually work. 
Um, this bridge, there's obviously two of these bridges with this name, the other one in Venice. I'd be biased and say this one's prettier. Hmm. This bridge is only accessible uh, to look at now by either going in the college and paying a fee or by going punting on the river. Again, they don't let the tourists walk across the bridge when it's open, it's kind of closed and it's only, it's a way of getting from one side of the river to the other for students within the college. I'm sure years ago there's a few stories about it. I remember seeing an iconic image from the 60s of guys, students, students come along and they kind of lowered a car off the bridge. I don't know if you've seen it, Dan. No. And I, was, I think it was an old, an old Morris and they hung it off the bridge of size, floating just above the water and it took an absolute age to get it down. Um, again, I'm sure there's a historian out there that can tell the story, but it's students pulling a prank. They've done a similar one at Senate House as well. And the fire brigade has to come and cut it down and get it back on punts and all sorts of stuff on that one. Again, in my time of working there, I've seen all sorts of stuff on that bridge of size from films been kind of screened onto bridge of size to also students jumping off the top of it, skinny dipping early morning to students thinking they're clever looking bikes on the outside and we come along and chop them off. Anyway, I like the Bridge of Sighs again. It's, I think it's a big iconic Cambridge image. Mm. And I really like this one again. It's kind of early dusk evening. I like how we've got the silhouette of the bridge, almost identical mirror image into the water. Mm. I like how we've got the punt bang in the middles if he's just coming under. And it can't, to me, Dan, that kind of sums up Cambridge. Yes, again, it's another iconic Cambridge image. Mm. Every, everyone, well, most people know where Bridge of Sighs is. Most people want to see it, know about it. It's one of the most photographed places in Cambridge alongside King's Chapel. And I, I just think it's quite iconic, really. It's nice. Like like it. I, say, I, I like the lighting as well. Like It works because it's, like I say, it's dusk. You've got nice lighting. It's no natural light in that. And that kind of silhouette really comes out on the water. That's natural light there. Yeah, that's natural light. I haven't, I haven't touched any lighting on that. It might be actually from the time when the May Balls just finished and it might be some lighting coming from behind us mm. on the opposite bridge for May Balls potentially, but mainly like natural lighting off the camera, certainly in my kind of capabilities and obviously no post edit as well either. No. It's, again, it's just snapped. A lot of these ones are kind of snapped off my iPhone other than my main camera. It's yeah. just things I, things I see when I'm walking around at work or walking around the streets, whatever. I only started Capture Cambridge because working nights, I kind of got bored sitting around when I woke up with the wife out at work and mates out at work and that. And I didn't want to go and like just waste my days off, so to speak. Yeah. So I kind of come up with the idea of documenting Cambridge, documenting characters of Cambridge and walking around places you wouldn't necessarily see. And again, combining photography with a bit of exercise, to be honest. Nice. And that's how, it, that's how I kind of come up with a capture Cambridge idea. And again, a lot of them are shot on iPhone or as well as the older camera. Mm. But it's, again, it's a bit... Um... It's a composition, really, isn't it? It's just a composition. I see. That's the thing. I mean, I've in my sort of t time, I, you see a lot of photographers that are, it's it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because you see a lot of photographers that are really technical, really technical, and they know yeah. you know everything about every yeah. Every inch. But they got but they got no soul, and they got they they got no eye, and they they're not creative. Do you know what I mean? And then there's yeah. the other side of the coin. You've got you've got the creative eye. You can cho choose to see the eye, and then you've got a balance, perhaps um, balance of a sort of uh, less technical knowledge. Do you know? Is it? Would you just would you say that's a fair fair? Yeah, I think that's a fair kind of summary, to be honest. And totally, hundred percent, I agree. Hmm. No, I like I that. Pretty spot on there, mate. To be fair. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I just it's just, it's my it's my opinion, but I do I just do, I do see. Do see really you can see a pattern emerging, can't you, in the images? Do you know what I mean? In, like, you say, good composition, mm. good framing, having the creative eye. Nice. Oh. So this one was uh, last summer. Again, I kind of call this, like, go-karts on punts or even, <laughs> do or, or even dodgings. So, excuse me, I decided to take a punt out from the college I work at, took my parents punting, night punting for the first time, Wanted to go, so we've punted out of St John's, come up river, Trinity Maple. As people in Cambridge know, the Maples are pretty famous. Everybody wants to get on the river and watch the firework display for free. It's the only, probably the best place to watch them. 
and it is literally bedlam on the river. It is literally like a cross between, I say, go-karts, dodgems, whatever. Mm. It's a bit of a free-for-all. So here we are, we're going under the bridge of size, quick snap on the iPhone. I like how we've got, you can't really make out much of the image, but I like how there's light shining through the kind of bridge itself in the middle. Mm. I like how you still got that strong floodlight sort of light and coming underneath and you can see all the shadows of all the punts. You can see it's busy. You can see it's chaotic. Black and white kind of gives it a bit of moody sort of effect because you've got that kind of smoky sort of look coming as well yeah. on, the, on the water there. And like I say, absolute chaos. As soon as the fireworks display finishes, literally like wacky races. <laughs> <laughs> good fun. Good fun. Entertaining. Recommend it. It almost looks like a picture out of a dick you know so you say it's like nice and moody it's something like out of a dickens novel isn't it sort of uh, yeah, like yeah this would old, be another old... one if i if i was to write a book or a fiction book and um, this would be another one that i'd probably use as a cover mm. i kind of like it because like you say it's got that kind of interesting kind of feel to it mm. and also like something a bit quirky something a bit different and so again it kind of sums up cambridge a little bit because a lot of people know oh okay that's that looks like the bridge of size or oh, what are they doing it kind of gives the viewer of the photography or, or sorry of the photo a kind of thought in the head of oh what am i looking at here yeah. oh, what's going on so, i mean mm. i like that kind of that intrigue kind of feeling in looking at an image as well yeah yeah like a like, like a nice um yeah back uh, yeah kind of a backstory to it yeah yeah basically yeah mm. yeah i like that cheers Wish those people on the bridge would just get out of the way, and then you could, <laughs> and then you, then you, it, it was, it were viewing it on the bridge, and then you could see the all the panes of glass. Yeah, it'd be cool. There's no, there's actually no glass in the bridge though. Is there no glass? Oh no, no, it's just open. But there's the, there's like the frames of it, or am I just there's? It, no, it's just the style of the way it's been built. There's no mm. panes of glass in the bridge. Yeah. I'm going to admit, you know, I, I kind of recognise the bridge, but I don't, I haven't, I, I, I always like focus on the mathematical bridge. Do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they're both like well photographed, aren't they? Well documented. Yeah. But I, like, I do like the mathematical bridge. Queen's College, nice college as well. Hmm. It's true. Bit of wildlife, nice. Bit of wildlife. I always say the hardest people to photograph are wildlife, kids and bright and bright <laughs> <laughs> um this this again screams to me a nice kind of cambridge shot if he's going to do a postcard series of different shots throughout the seasons in cambridge this would be in there as my spring shot i like it because it kind of it's got that as women say it's got that ah oh, that kind of <laughs> the image. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> with the ducklings, is that there are either ducklings or swans, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, like with, with the fluffy kind of baby ducks, we'll say. Um, they all sat there and it was just again walking past and it's like, oh blimey, that's a shot and a half. Quick snap it and take it. And then we've got again good composition. We've got nice greenery behind straight away behind them. We've got the rough stone in the front. Mm. So we've got a massive difference in things there. We've got nice cloud base. We've got the trees on the right, the trees on the left, and King's just popping up in the background. King's College Chapel there, just like, hello, look at me in the background there. And I think that kind of makes the image. Like, it's got, again, it's got, it's telling a story. It's got a bit of everything. It's got nice colours. And like I say, it's got that R factor. <laughs> as, as I'm looking at that, I'm looking at King's College Chapel in the background. And uh, I think in the next uh, three or four weeks, you could get a good shot of, because um, you're well, yeah, because they've, they've 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 taken up half the lawn, haven't they? And they put a wall. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. Well, we'll have to sneak in there and get one, maybe. I don't know. I feel. I don't know. It's it's pretty weird because I, as as a as a garden designer that designs wildlife, you know, biodiverse, you know, uh, gardens. I should love that. But you know what? From a composition point of view, and from yeah. a, the cl that classic view of the King's College. It, it break it breaks it breaks it up, doesn't it? I you it kind of one. It's either going to be whole wildflower meadow or whole lawn, but it's cut in the middle. And I'm like, you know, I went, I went and had a look the other day, and it does look a bit strange, to be honest. Like like you say, it's almost half and half, and it, yeah. it kind of takes away that image. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, to be honest. Yeah, 
No, but, it's, it's kind of weird. I, sh- I, I didn't know how I felt about that. I thought I'd be, yeah, it'd be great, you know, have a wildflower meadow. And it's great. Mm. But then, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, from a photographic point of view, you've got the you've got the horizon where you've got the meadow meeting the lawn and that yeah. and that creates uh the line of symmetry doesn't it or breaks up the yeah, line of symmetry. Right. yeah it's a difficult one hmm. still it's an it's an it is an R moment oh. <laughs> 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 uh, i saw that i saw this earlier and i think this is i love this because you've got sorry to to talk over you have you got there go you got people enjoying it. You got teenager who thinks he's cooler. He thinks he's cooler yep. at, as, but he still got go out, go out of his parents. And then you got that nice sort of. There seems to be a nice moment going on there between those four. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, the classic uh, boat. The classic boat shoes. Yeah, standard. Classic boat shoes. Yeah. A classic punt kind of look. Mm-hmm. I quite like this image because in photography we're finding more and more that a style called street photography and kind of storytelling from on the street is really popular, especially on your social media channels at the moment, like Instagram. You'll get a lot of photographers that go out, they'll, pose, they'll be walking around the streets looking just for that quick, iconic image, quick kind of, oh, that's, that's fancy, that's a bit of character. And they'll kind of shoot that person unawares. Mm. And it kind of adds to that atmospheric. And it's quite a clever way of doing it. And it's quite a difficult kind of, subject to kind of photograph I think personally because you don't want to be too like in people's faces and intrusive mm. but you also want to kind of catch people in the ways to catch that natural look this was standing on the top of Clare College uh, bridge as you go over there the punts are coming in at through constantly in the summer as you know I happen to just look over and thought right this looks really nice I've I've took the picture like you say there's a I like looking at characters of people and kind of trying to capture that sort of thing and tell a story by that. Mm. So these guys, like you say, there's a lot going on in the boat. They're not all looking at me smiling and pointing, which some people would do. <laughs> but and it's capturing people naturally, their own kind of environment as such, if you know what I mean. Yes. But also, again, it's another iconic Cambridge image, people on a punt. And it tells a story. I then come home, post edit. I, I proper hit the black and white on this, wanting to just like, focus mainly in the middle of the image on the people in the boat and kind of darken out the background of everything else and i think it, again i think it works and it's another kind of style of photography that i've been trying to play with more but i kind of out of my comfort zone with it a bit and kind of find it a bit challenging is street photography and like it's something i'd like to kind of develop more as i go forward and kind of like i say document the characters of cambridge tell a story on the images that you see happening in the street that people like necessarily wouldn't see while they were there mm. and i think i think again like i said i think this sums it up this one have you been out in cambridge um over the last over the last few weeks as in capturing the sort of i've been out a couple of times down yet um planning to go out again hopefully to my, i'm off now for a couple of weeks on holiday obviously we can't go anywhere so i hope to hit the streets pound the streets again uh, me and Ollie are hopefully going to go out and do a few little projects. Um, so yeah, we're going to go out and capture some images, capture a bit of footage of Cambridge, like especially on lockdown while it's so quiet. I think it's a good opportunity to get kind of natural Cambridge. Nice. And if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this uh, podcast for the first time, um, Ben just mentioned something called Ollie. So Ollie Kane, a uh, great vi- videographer. If you go to the YouTube channel or you go to the podcast app, I interview him in episode four. So, um, uh, so yeah, just to give a bit of background on. Yeah, on well, I'd like to say as well, Ollie is one of the best in the business. He's a young guy. He's really passionate about what he does. I work with him at Cambridge United, and he's superb at what he does in terms of videography. So go check him out. He's yeah. really worth a, really worth a follow and a look. Yeah, at what he does. He, yeah, I mean, he is. He's a. He's he's technically very good. Um, and he's very, very caring. He's got a good heart about him. I like him. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah. I've only worked with Volley now for about a year or so at Cambridge United, but through that time, we I'd say we've almost become close friends. Like, he's been to me to France to interview people. We, yeah. We're at, well, with each other on match days constantly. And yeah, you, it almost becomes like a second family when you work with people that close, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd say now, now class him as a close friend, so yeah. Big shout out to Ollie. <laughs> Good stuff. This is, this is the Ollie Kane fan club uh, podcast. Yeah, the Ollie Kane fan club podcast. <laughs> yeah, love it.
Hey. Okay, so another iconic image. Um, branching out a bit here, Ely Cathedral. Okay. Went over there early one morning, popped the old drone up, had a look round. Wanted to get it. Like, you can see Ely Cathedral for miles, can't you, as you're driving in towards Ely and across the fens there. Again, really stands out, really dominant on the skyline. Wanted to get the drone up, get an aerial view, check out what it looks like. Come up with this image, quite liked it. Took a bit of post editing because it was quite bright, quite, and the drone isn't that great on lighting. So, yeah. took a bit of editing on this one. But I like it because it just shows the Ely Cathedral how it was built, just like bang, there, filling up the sky, fill, fill, filling up the skyline. And it just shows how the city of Ely itself has expanded out around it and how that is like the focal point in Ely. But we forget, uh, we don't, we're, yeah, no, we do forget how uh, how an amazing piece of architecture it really is because we just know it's Ely and it's just just down, you know, just down the A10. Yeah, I, again, I agree, Dan. I think Ely's a really good town. A lot happening there, to be honest, and I've got a lot of friends over there. But yeah, like you say, I, I kind of go around looking at buildings now, such looking at that creative fire, looking at different angles been appreciative of the work and the craftsmanship that went into that all those years ago do you know what i mean people take those things for granted the same in cambridge with the university buildings i believe as well people mm. take the architecture of it for granted another it, good another good day out sorry dan another good day out is going to the cathedral you can actually do a tour within the cathedral and go up on the top of that tower get some amazing views on a clear day mm. recommend that one because i'm thinking you know as a photographer you could the tower i'm just thinking of the angles you could you could take um of the cathedral I mean, you could perhaps take it up, you know, um, you know, take a photograph looking up towards the tower, or t being on the tower and photographing down. And we like we were talking about earlier with um, the London plane trees, the shadow play that you could get. How 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 uh, the cathedral would look in different times of the day because it must be so many lovely. Uh, Lovely angles, lovely shadow bits of shadow. Full of stained glass windows as well, so you get some amazing like yeah. natural light coming in as well. Getcha. Yeah, like and like, like like you say, Dan, it's such a big place as well. You can go right around it, go in it, and there's for for, for people like me as like a passionate photographer, there's lots of opportunities there to photograph and try and look for that different angle, that creative eye. And yeah, it Ely Cathedral is a great place. Nice. Slightly uh, different angle. I think that is the slightly different angle of the Cambridge one we saw before. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, there we kind of got King's College, as we said earlier about the Wild Meadow, mm. which will take up half of that green space there. So you can see from the air then how much sort of space is going to take up down. But that's your thought. But that's perhaps what I was trying to say earlier. It's that's, that's such a lovely um, homogenous like foreground, isn't it? That is your yeah, yeah. That would just yeah, that would spoil it. Can you get into King's College? Oh, perhaps you can't get into King's College at the moment because it's shut You can't at the moment, um, but yeah, university staff can. Nah, you've got the golden key, have you? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll have to take you sometime, Dan. Yeah, too. Well, I'd put, put, a, put me in a porter's outfit and I'll start. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look the part. You'll ah. have to come along. Do you right. Again, uh, in, uh, in St. John's, this is a kind of favourite spot of mine. I like to sit here, kind of watch the world go by sometimes. It's nice sometimes to get out, get some fresh air, especially if you like been dealing with something difficult, yeah. especially like in my job, sometimes we deal with difficult things, but we'll maybe talk about that another time. Yeah. But I like to kind of come out in the open, sit down, kind of reflect on things, watch the world go by. And this is my kind of spot that I like sitting if I'm in the college early morning, or if I go back into college during the day for whatever reason, it's quite nice and it's iconic again. It's another view of the Bridge of Sighs. People are probably bored of looking at the Bridge of Sighs in this yeah. part. <laughs> but again, this, this works. As you can see, the guy's going about to punt underneath the bridge. Um, we can also see the next bridge, which is Kitchen Bridge, one of the oldest bridges in Cambridge. In, you can see the curves under there. And I kind of like, again, the symmetry, the composition. It's black and white. And it could be any period, that kind of image. And I'd, again, yeah, I it's quite iconic, Dan. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, I wonder how that photograph would have looked. Okay, I guess it would obviously need loads of post-production, but yep. if everything else stayed black and white and the, and the leaves of the tree were just were green, if you just 
if you just focus yeah, yeah on kind of focused on them i also yeah. thought that maybe you could focus just on the middle of the like under the bridge and yeah. kind of color, color that area that looked pretty yeah. cool as well nice. and then black and white everything else be all right it's a it is a bit of a timeless photograph isn't it again th this area as well was really popular as a film backdrop in a couple of films uh stephen hawkins the theory of everything yeah, yeah, that yeah. film was filmed in parts of the college around this area iconic kind of view of the bridge again in that film a lot of film companies have come and hung like i said before films off the bridge showing it on punts quite cool and again it's just iconic cambridge i think yeah talking of iconic cambridge that is a stonk that is a stonker of a photograph Cheers. look i wouldn't i'm saying it because i looked at it earlier and again i focused uh i know where is uh, Midsummer Common. I'm just thinking just to the left of here is Midsummer House, isn't it? No. No, we're further down the river going back to nearly. Of course we are, of course we are. But I looked to the I looked to the line of the bridge, but then I didn't notice the reflection of the the, the reflection of the bridge on the can. I, I like I like to go out so sometimes after work, especially in the winter, I like to go out early and kind of try and capture again something different. One of the sports I like photographing is rowing. During term time in university season, the rowers are out, in the morning, out on the river half four onwards in the morning doing their training. This, is, this picture to me is quite sentimental. I've got this hanging in my house actually. Um, again, it's early morning. We've got the sun rising. We've got a frost on the common. We kind of got a combination of colour there. We've got black and white. We've got, we've got some colour there on the water. We've got a nice reflection. We've got the bridge in the middle. And I actually grew up about five minutes from this bridge in Chester and itself. Okay. So I was, I was always over this common as a kid growing up and always around. And uh, again, it was quite mean sight to me. Mm. But I, I remember coming as a kid standing where I took this picture and feeding the ducks with my parents and stuff, mm. my sister and that sort of stuff growing up. And uh, I like it because it's, again, it shows Cambridge, but slightly different if you know what I mean. Yeah, it does. And like, like we say, it's got a bit of everything in there, nice color and a lot going on and a dog as well a dog for anything as well and a dog yeah <laughs> yeah i like it mate i do tom just brett i'm sorry this is not good for a podcast there's a bit of silence but i'm just the more i look at the photograph the more i see yeah the more you can see yeah. you can yeah. see the person and across the bridge yeah i just noticed him now i was look well i was so as i was saying that i was looking at the willow thinking that's again the quintessential weeping willow as yeah. you know. and then i noticed the guy you know yeah the person on the bike with, with the with the bike and the helmet on the ride yeah, sometimes you just gotta wait for that kind of moment do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but also you don't want to risk losing the light as well so yeah that's pretty special image this one i like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this goes back to the street photography that I was talking about um, kind of trying to capture some of those characters you see around the streets of Cambridge when you're out and about shopping and stuff this guy's a busker in Cambridge uh, snuck up took a photo, didn't like it so I said alright then pose for one pose this one, sticks his tongue out quite a character good on the old harp there yeah. And again, it tells a story, and it's a kind of bit of a jokey image, but it's a nice bit of street photography. I threw this one in just because I thought it was quite entertaining. Yeah, but you know what? You know what that reminded me of? It was that he, he, you picked out the character. You know, you picked out the, the character within him, and it reminded reminded me of Snowy, where that was a kind. Yeah. Of, oh yeah. Now he obviously doesn't look like Snowy, but it was again that 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 sort of that. That going down that sort of line of things yeah that performance art or that sort of extra for people that you get in petty curie and i assume this was in petty curie yeah, it was, it, yeah, yeah, petty yeah, curie. yeah i think that's what we're so like again that we take for granted in cambridge you walk around the streets compared to other cities you get a lot of buskers around mm. and i think some of them are good and worth their value like to just throw a couple of quid in the pot because mm. they do entertain you as you walk past yeah And last but no means least, who, who's this little fella? Uh, I can't remember his name, so you put me on the spot there. But again, another character of Cambridge. This is one of the university constables. This is what we have to wear when we are on ceremonial duty at the Senate House. And again, I like, I like kind of it because it fills the whole frame of the image. 
it's almost like a portrait, but unawares, he's like not looking at me direct, mm. quite like that. And again, it tells a story. It's, it's like you look at that and you think, oh, the university constable, Cambridge. Mm. And uh, it's, all, it's all traditional garb like that. It's all, all that uniform is going back to traditions, hundreds of years. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, uh, and you say he picks out, he picks out his, his sort of attitude. He looks like he's, uh, he's focused on his work. He's quite, ser he's quite serious about his responsibility. Yeah, he isn't taking things for granted, is he? He isn't like, like you say, he's on the ball. He means business. Mm. Looks smart, looks sharp. Yeah. And again, like I say, if you come down during graduation times at Senate House, you'll see plenty of these boys walking around constables like this. They make for great images, I think. Yeah. Proper characters of Cambridge. Yeah, it's nice. See, you, you wear this garb as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm literally just um, past my probation. So now I'll have to wear the top hat and the cloak as well. I've been wearing the cloak, but yeah, I have to wear the top hat now as well. Would you ever put, ever think about uh, putting in a Cambridge United little... Uh, pin badge. Yeah, pin badge. No, you wouldn't get away with it. I don't know if I'd get away with that one. Yeah, well, try it. Worth a go, worth a go. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Well, Ben, that is the last few photographs. Thank you. No, thank you, Matt. That was absolutely superb. I loved, I loved, um, well, it's quite a few to go over, really. But yeah, I, like, I like, certainly like Bar Barry Cole's one. Because again, that's, yeah, that, that was like a nice Barry, yeah. yeah. But like I just you it's nice to show a different selection, Dan, to people that are listening to your podcast of what, we, what I can do. Yeah. And also, like, just talking about photography in Cambridge in general, really. But again, it doesn't it show you, like we've said it a couple of times, just how lucky we are of where we live. And oh, yeah. again, we are, I guess we, when we walk around Cambridge, we're on a mission and we're just going to the shops or we're doing something. But we forget to perhaps um, look at the architecture around us and really take it in. And uh, Yeah, and I think, again, like we've said, haven't we, we take things for granted too much these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think that, yeah, it's great that you know with the with the dr the drone footage and the ones of the bridge, uh, yeah, it just gets you to look at it, look at look at Cambridge in a different light. So I think if anything, hopefully it'll get listeners going around maybe Cambridge themselves, looking at kind of a creative eye now and looking at different ways of looking at Cambridge. Yeah, too right, Ben. You've been Thanks an absolute. Now you've been an absolute agent. Speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. Take care. Thank you.